Thank you for joining us. And Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here and to help share Amy's amazing story. Has that changed the way you now look at other patients who come in after cardiac arrest? Well, in terms of induced hypothermia, I'm definitely sold on the protocol. We knew the science was there, uh, but to actually see Amy's amazing recovery has just been remarkable. And so now, every time I'm caring for a post-cardiac resuscitated patient, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Is this protocol appropriate for the patient? And so you had induced hypothermia. And I do want to explain to everyone exactly what happens. And we have a machine over here that I just want to share with folks because this is how modern medicine has really changed what we can do. This is a machine that essentially protected Amy's body and her brain when she was in the hospital. So this is the Arctic sun right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And this is used by the country's top hospitals to induce hypothermia. Now, the design of these gel pads here is to be able to enable this Arctic sun to transfer up to five times more energy than conventional methods. We used to use things like cooling blankets, wraps, or ice packs. And very soon, you're going to start to see fluid, cold fluid, running through this pack. They're placed strategically on the body. And what's so remarkable about this device is you can very accurately lower someone's body temperature, but maybe more importantly, after you induce that hypothermia in the first 24 hours, the rewarming is so very crucial. Using these pads, you can very accurately rewarm a patient, and you can see the, the fluid running through this pad here. That's how it's accomplished. And there are still a lot of other techniques used. In remote emergency departments, we have protocols as far as using cooled IV fluids. The key, though, is to get someone cool as quickly as possible after the event. Amy's story is so very remarkable because of how long you were down and the fact that you went to a small community hospital, very few resources, and yet still, here you are today. How long has it been? Almost six months. Yep. Yeah. And, and so here we are, we're, we're six months out. And I don't think anyone would, would question the doctor's use of hypothermia in you. How do you feel in terms of, you know, your doctor said you probably never walk again. How do you feel as far as your everyday life? Uh, I know that there are probably times where you're still frustrated, but are there things you can't do? Are there... You know, I can do just about anything that I did before, anything that any mother, you know, can do. I can take care of my kids. I can go to work. Um, obviously, I can't drive because that's one of the things that I'm not allowed to do for six months. But uh, the only thing that I struggle with is memory. Uh, processing short-term memory, uh, that's really the only problem that I have now. Other than that, I'm absolutely normal. I want to thank Dr. Jones for joining us. And I know that you, just like myself as physicians, is there really one thing that, that you also have to talk about in this scenario, which is how important CPR is? Absolutely. I think that should be the biggest take home message for everyone that just as in Amy's case, this can happen to anyone. And getting the heart beating again as soon as possible is absolutely crucial. And so go out there, take the, the time that it takes, which is not very long to become certified in CPR. Thank you so much for joining us today and for all that you're doing. Thank you for having me. And you know what is amazing? I know you were nervous coming out here because this is a big moment. You're sharing your story with the world. But I can tell you right now that there is no way anyone in this audience or anyone at home would ever have any idea that you spent seven days of your life in a coma. Exactly. You know, I, uh, even though I come across as absolutely perfectly normal, if someone was to walk up to me, they would never have thought in a million years that I was, you know, dead for 20 minutes, that I was in a coma for a week, and that I struggle with this memory loss. But, you know, I also want people to know that just because I seem perfectly normal, it does not take away from the seriousness of what happened to me at all. And it can happen to anybody. But I also want it to give people hope. That, um, that there are resources out there that can help people and, and miracles do happen.